it was the essence of what dance is. It brought them this feeling of grace. They had a neurological movement disorder, but for the first time they felt grace in, in command of their body. And the joy and the endorphins that come with that, by the end of class, everybody felt different in the way they came in. And one person said, there's an element of magic in this class. And that's just what it is. Hello, hello, my following friends. I did not want to finish my day without sharing some really exciting news with you. Um, as you know, I dance every day until I turn 50, which was about four months. And I, along the way, I raised um, some funds and awareness for Dance with Sick Kids. And then I turned 50, and then I decided to dance occasionally. And I've been looking for my next adventure. And that's what I'm going to call it, because it is an adventure to me. It feeds my soul, feeds my heart. And I've been thinking about uh, this person and this charity for, for quite some time. And I reached out to her today and we had a wonderful Zoom call. And I'm gonna show you lots of footage from that because so you get to understand exactly what hopefully you're all gonna get involved with. And that is, I have decided to dance around America and raise funds and awareness for dancing through Parkinson's. Now, one of my most favorite people in the world is my Auntie Linda. She lives in LA and she has Parkinson's. She was diagnosed with Parkinson's at age 56, she's 71, and she is remarkable. I'm gonna let you hear a little bit about her story and you can hear how Dancing Through Parkinson's was born. Let's talk about your story in your journey, yes. how that's been, how it's looking. Yes. Well, here's how it started. Uh, about 17 years ago, we were on vacation in the Hamptons and I noticed a little tremor in my leg. I didn't think much of it, but it wouldn't go away. I thought, well, maybe I need to relax more. I would drink a little bit more. It would still be there. It wouldn't be there when I was walking or doing things, but when I was resting, it was always there. So my mother had Parkinson's disease, so I, I was aware of it. And I thought that's what it was, but other parts of me didn't look like I had Parkinson's disease. I was moving fine. I was dancing fine. Everything else looked okay. And I remember my doctor, I went to my internist and he looked at me and he said, you don't have Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, he sent me to some neurologists and they didn't know either. One of them, neurologists can be an awful group. The first neurologist looked at me after he examined me, kind of put his hands back like this and his legs on the on his desk, he says, I don't know what the hell you have. Come back in six months and I'll see how much you deteriorate. <gasps> so, you know, which is, if it was Parkinson's, it's progressive. It is, it's a progressive disease. Well, how I love you at this stage. I was 56, which is considered young. It's not young onset. That's somebody like Michael J. Fox, who's, was, who's diagnosed in their 30s. People like that have a really hard time of it because it, it's progressive. It slowly progresses, but it does progress. And the first doctor who I didn't like very much told me this is how it usually progresses. The first five years, you're able to manage it. Though management isn't easy, but you can manage it. The second five years are difficult. And the third five years, people usually are in a wheelchair or in bed. And that was the course with my mother. That's what I saw with my mother. You know, that's what I thought was gonna to happen to me. And yet I kept dancing and I, and I kept living. I kept on traveling and living and doing the things I did. And the doctors at were amazing. At that point, was it hindering you at any? You know, the, the tremor really wasn't, it, it, it was annoying more than anything else. When I find, I didn't start with medication right away because I thought I didn't need it. Finally, when I did start with medication, it's like, oh, why didn't I do this sooner? I completely had no symptoms. It kept my symptoms under control. I'm, I'm really very lucky because the medicines worked on me. It doesn't work on a lot of people, but it's worked very well on me. What age were you when you went, started your medication? I was diagnosed at 56. Probably I started at 58. Okay, just a couple of years. Okay. A couple of years later. Okay. Because they were telling me the, the reason to start medicine, even if you don't need it that much, would be that it's neuroprotective. So I thought, well, let me protect the, the rest of the neurons I have. Yeah. And really it, it was wonderful starting it. it. It helped me be myself again. I was dancing just like before. I didn't feel any impairment. 
And that continued for a good five, six, seven, eight years. I could feel progression. I needed more medicine. It, it was progressing, but I was still under control, even after the to up to the 15 year mark, which was last year, it was pretty well controlled. And it still is now, though it's harder, though it is harder. And the reason it's harder is that the pills only do so much and the disease goes past the pills. As active as I am, I'm doing very, very well for somebody who's had it this long. Exactly. When they, the prediction was by now you should have been in a wheelchair and you've correct. Shown- and, and, I, and I've seen that people I've seen who've been in our Parkinson's dance classes are either dead or are very sick, very, very debilitated, very. So I've seen it. I've seen that progression. Why do you think it's been different for you? The doctors all said when, when I was first diagnosed by a doctor in New York, who was wonderful. He said to me, you know, you're a dancer. You're going to do very well. And I thought, yeah, right. And yet maybe he was right, you know, because that's what separates me from from the other people. What what is it that I'm doing that the other people don't do? I'm dancing more than they're doing. They're, They're exercising, but I'm dancing. And I actually sent you an email of some of the studies, neuroscience studies that there are right now showing that dance is probably the best exercise for people with neurological diseases because exercise is important but dance utilizes so many factors of the brain to remember choreography and spatial um awareness yeah yes that it incorporates all that and forms more new pathways in the brain to help with movement what happens in parkinson's is i don't have a neurotransmitter called dopamine And so my movement neurons aren't firing because the transmitter isn't there helping them to fire. But what happens is that other parts of the brain start to kick in and they help those neurons fire where the dopamine isn't there. And they're beginning to prove it now with neuroscience. They always thought that, like that's what they thought 16 years ago when I was diagnosed, but now they're proving it. See, I love that. And this is why this is so close to my heart, because one, you are close to my heart. You know, I feel so blessed to have you in my family through marriage, Uh but I'm sure we were related in another part. We are. We're we're kindred souls. We are. But we've always shared this joy for dance, joy for for life, for which is why if I can help and get on board and raise awareness, but raise money, much needed funds to keep the dance through Parkinson's going yeah. as many people for as long as it can. Tell me a little bit about dance, dancing through Parkinson's. I would travel very often to New York because my children are here, as you know, and my grandbabies are here. And once when I was in New York years ago, about 12 years ago, I was reading the the New York Times and there was a full page article about dance classes for people with Parkinson's at the Mark Morris Dance Company in Brooklyn, which is one of the premier dance companies in New York. And I thought, oh, dance for people with Parkinson's at one of the best places. So here I am in my 50s or 60s going into this great grand studio in Brooklyn with Parkinson's and, and taking a class. And it was a class of about 50 people. And it wasn't a traditional dance class because the class was filled with people with wheelchairs or with walkers or people like me that were mobile. There were all levels of people with Parkinson's there and their caretakers and their family. And they were seated at the beginning of the class. And yet when the dance teacher would do port de bras with them or other choreography in a chair, they were all dancing. Yeah. And if they could stand up, they would stand up and move across the floor. And if, if they couldn't stand up, there's strategies for people to move in their wheelchairs or seated. Mm-hmm. And the, it was the essence of what dance is. It brought them this feeling of grace. They had a neurological movement disorder, but for the first time, they felt grace and in command of their body. And the joy and the endorphins that come with that. By the end of class, everybody felt different than the way they came in. And one person said, there's an element of magic in this class. And that's just what it is. There's an element of magic. And that comes from the arts. That comes from music and dance and and doing those things. And we that's know, we know that joy it can bring, but <clears throat> for it to actually ignite all those neuros. And I had yeah. about the choreography and thinking about 
putting all yeah. that together. Um, putting it all together. And you know, depression is a very big problem with Parkinson's, a huge problem. And because people are depressed, they don't want to leave their homes and they, they become very isolated. Mm. So here you've got a population of people going to dance classes. They've got their own community and they're ending that isolation. And what's happening is the brain is combating the depression. That's brilliant. That's it, brilliant. It's, it's, it, it really is. So, so dancing through Parkinson's, is it nationwide in, in America? Well, it's, it's become so. Mark Morris dan started the program. It's called Dance for PD. And they started it when I went there 12, 13 years ago. And they've taught people throughout the world the concepts. And now there's classes worldwide. There's Australia, there's New Zealand, there's Israel, all through Europe, all through South America. It's all over. It's all over. So tell me about the, the charity in LA and how you're involved because you not only, you teach the classes, you participate in the classes. I can imagine that you uh, would be inspirational and really motivational. So, and you well, must have your own community and, and tribe of these, you know, people that really rely on you. Well, you know, that's really what it is. How it started was when I was first diagnosed, I have a very good friend whose daughter is a dancer and a marvelous dancer. She has her own dance company in Vertigo Dance Theater. And she was just beginning her company. And she, she came to me one day and she said, Linda, what can I do to help you with the Parkinson's? Do you wanna do yoga together? Do you wanna do Pilates together? What can I do to help you? And I said, well, I've seen this program in New York. It's just starting. And I'd love to bring this kind of a program to Los Angeles because I thought I'd want to partake in it. I'd want to take the program and have her dancers and every, everybody teach the classes. So we went to New York, we were trained and we started our program in Los Angeles. Since, since that, I think we've had our 10 year anniversary. We've got six classes throughout the area of Los Angeles, many more starting. We're doing virtual learning through Zoom. But I never thought that I would be the one helping the dancers and helping to teach the classes, but I am because yeah. I do understand what the people are going through with Parkinson's. So though I'm not a professional dancer and really this program needs to be taught by professional dancers because a dancer understands the body. There are strategies to move. If you want your legs to come up here, you've got to get your knee up and then develop the leg up. You've got to develop strategies for moving. And that's just what a person with Parkinson's have to do. And a dancer understands about the body most was the premise for, for this program. And I think it's true. Mm -hmm. And they're the one guiding people safely through dancing. It must be inspirational for, for these, for, for your, think, the, the people that are doing, to see you actually teaching it as well. I, just, I, I think, think it is. Know. And and look, you can't compare me to one of the professional dancers. Oh, I don't try. I've seen but, you dance. I've seen you dance. <laughs> I've seen you dance. But, <laughs> but it, it is inspirational, especially with a new person coming in who's just diagnosed and is terrified. Yeah. And they see I've had it so many years and here I am, I'm still teaching the class and you know though they'll see sometimes i'll have a tremor i won't be able to do something as well as you know turns or something as well as others i'm still doing it exactly how many how many people do you get in in these classes it, it varies anywhere from 10 to 30 now zoom classes we've had people throughout the world which is you know yeah this is, yeah, this is what I love. And this is to me what it's all about is that awareness, getting this yes. out there, spreading it, yes. you know, yes. and you are the best person that I can, uh, you know, well, because I love you, but that I can also <laughs> align myself with because you're living it and you've led the way and you know the benefits of it. And I love that I you do. understand the science too. I just think you're such a great ambassador for, Thank you. for, for, you know, each day yeah. as you do. I'm proud to be able to talk about this program because I really do believe it. And we've been at numerous conferences, medical conferences, talking about it to doctors mm -hmm. and surgeons. And I, I believe in this program. I, I, I'm, I'm proof it's helped me. Exactly. Is there any side effects to the medication? There are a lot of side effects to the medication, lots of side effects. 
And that's why a lot of people can take them. The, the medication that helps the most is the gold standard, carbidopa, levodopa. It's a chemical form of dopamine, which your body is missing. The problem is it works. As you progress, you need more of it. But the more you take, it gives you too much movement. It gives you, you see Michael J. Fox, he's like this all the time. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. called dyskinesia. It's too much movement that comes from the medicine. Okay. So you reach, you reach a point of diminishing returns with it. It's yeah. great to help you move, but sometimes you move too much and uncontrollably. So that's and, when we'll stop that. And then the, then the disease will progress, obviously. Yes, there's also, there's also a brain surgery, deep brain stimulation, which is done. It's quite common. You know, you hear brain surgery. It's done while you're awake and they insert electrodes in the brain and then they come down to a, like a pacemaker type battery in your chest and mm. you regulate it. And it really does help with movement. Wow. You know, it's helped some people a lot, some, some people a lot. Of is that relatively it's, new? Is, is that no, new? no, it's not. Been, it's no. not. It's been there. It's just being made better and better every year. It was quite, it was quite primitive at first, but they're really just making it better and better. There are side effects to that as well. So yeah. everything, there, all the good things with the medication come with a whole slew of side effects. And some of the side effects, side effects could be, well, I was on one medication that I had to stop it gave me hallucinations. Oh. It slurred my speech and made it my eyesight worse. Yeah. So there's Is that whole... sort of trial and error sometimes, of, you know, trialing different medication is and just you're exactly under what it is. Your, uh, medical. Exactly problem. what it is. Because you take a cocktail, you don't just take one medication, you put it in conjunction with others. Mm -hmm. There are things that have dopamine. There's something called dopamine agonists. They act like dopamine, though they're not dopamine. Though those have a lot of side effects as well. Compulsive behavior is part of it. They find with some people, people become compulsive gamblers or compulsive shoppers or compulsive sex okay. addicts. All these brain they medicines. Yeah. Yes, they trigger different parts of the brain. And it, it's a delicate balance to find that cocktail that's just right. It's tough. It's tough. It is tough. It is mm -hmm. tough. But you're doing great. Thank you. Oh, great. You know, I'm really excited to get in, to get involved with Dancing Through Parkinson's, but can you tell me and, and my following friends, um, yeah. where, what, where's the money going to go? What? Okay, what that's very interesting. So the money goes into Invertigo Dance Theatre. They're the umbrella that sponsors us. And they're a new beginning dance group in Los Angeles that's really growing by leaps and bounds. They, they, they've been already distinguished as one of the best dance companies in Los Angeles. Pretty soon, all the, they'll be touring and the world is going to know about them, first of all. But this is their form of outreach. They, you know, dance isn't just what they want to do. They want to reach the population. And at this Dancing Through Parkinson's is their main outreach program, though they've got a lot of others that go into schools and places where people are underserved. This company does a lot of good. Let, oh. Let's do this. Let's see what we can do. You know, this is going to be a great adventure for us, right? I, so we get I to, love, I I love get doing to, this um, with you, Kelly. Kelly, thank for you. For time with you as well. I wanted to lay quite a lot of that, the video because there's so much in this that you need to know if you don't know. But you know, what I do find is everyone knows someone that has Parkinson's or has passed from Parkinson's. So this is so close to my heart because of Auntie Linda and we've danced in New York together and LA and London. <laughs> we dance anywhere, it doesn't matter. So to be able to stand beside her and raise awareness of the power of dance and what that does for people with Parkinson's is just phenomenal. I'll give you more details as I get closer to it. I'm not dancing around America. I will be in California. I will be going to at least four big cities. And what I will be doing is putting a shout out to any businesses, small, medium, large, to come and dance with me. It's gonna be dance and donate. It will be like what I did with Dance for Sick Kids where I involved businesses here. And I'll be coming to your business in California, not wherever you are in California, wherever I'm going in California, I'll come to your business, we'll pick a, you'll pick a song, we'll dance, and you will kindly, happily donate to Dance Through Parkinson's through um, Invertigo Theatre. And I will keep you updated.